its protection and care of Mother Nature. Workout like this making me stronger and healthier. However, could give me a heart attack. Here is a special border. It's borderline between the grassland and the forest. It's got all the way east can reach Russia. Behind me is west. If you cross border over there, will be Mongolia. So I'm gonna keep walking towards Russia. Let's go. Erguna city has a unique name, and it is well known for its blending cultures. There are many Russian families has settled in this northern Chinese city for decades. I visited Mr. Dong and his wife, who were born in China with Russian hairs. Dong's mom moved to China from Chida, the boundary city of Russia only 500 kilometers away from Erguna. He married a Chinese woman and settled in China for the rest of his life. They currently have four daughters, are all living and working in China. <laughs> Mr. Dong and his wife prepared many goodies for my crew and I. We tasted the gooseneck Russian pastries, chatted about the Dong's family history. As a tradition of the family, Mr. Dong still lives in Russian lifestyle and practices Orthodox as his religion. In about 20 years ago, Mr. Dong decided to build his own house with his own design. It did not take too much effort to accomplish his dream. This blue cottage house has been the main topic for Mr. Dong to start the conversation with guests since. What a good family. This is a very important family in town. In Erguna, there are many uh, Russian uh, families living in China since the 1920s. Mr. Dong is one of the families and uh, now he showed me the pictures. Look at the pictures. So many important people have been visited here. And here is quite special in Erguna. Uh, even in China, everything keeps the Russian style. The house, the way they design, and the family, you know, a lifestyle. Even in the rooms, all the decoration and the, the food, everything and they do is keep the style and uh, it's quite unique in China in Erguna. Those are the ship bone. Normally, farmers collect those ship bones. The more you collect, it means your rich family have more ships. Well, here's the radio. Now is the weather report. Today, it's just uh, 40 below zero this winter. So it's cold. Now is the news. Today, there's 20 horses running in the grass. Now some music time. 
Check it out. This is a Mongolian famous song. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Scare you, did I? Actually, this is a Mongolian tent. Right here, it's the VIP bed for the guests of the family. And over there is for the master sleeping. So, it's time to go to work. Horse, my servant, ready. Surprise. This is not an outdoor. This is a museum from the uh, Mongolian um, village here. Beautiful costume, traditional Mongolian costume. It's all utilized. This is, this is a museum for a little uh, village. They have to collect the money from the residents, of all the farmers around here. So they get the museum. They display all this, you know, uh, through the history. Actually, it's normal utensils people use every day. Buliat group is a branch of a Russian ethnic with the current status of a Mongolian. There are about 5,000 Buliat families living in northern Mongolia. They are rich in cultural and wealthy in mind. This only with 400 families village developed a cultural museum for people to explore Buliat history. <laughs> For this costume, now I represent Buliat, one of Mongolian branch. Our dress like this is for a man. It represents the different colors, three colors. Sky, earth, and people with a heart. There's lots of things on this. Oh, another thing, I'll show you the hat oh, here. The hats represent here the sun. And all this represent the, the sun beam, sunlight. And right here, Every man wear the hat have to have 11 columns. The 11 columns represent the very original ancestor have 11 brothers. So that represents the family. Buliant woman dresses in a unique style with Mongolian expression mixed with Russian appearance. In female dresses, the design could show the marriage status. Young girls wear the dress in one piece, a married woman will add a colorful vest on top of their skirts. Most jewelry is made of silver with rings linked to sorts of tools at the end, such as knife, fire starters, and small containers. Well, if you think about a Mongolian life, it's wild and rough, and think it again. Today, Mongolian life like this. See this is a modern sofa, lifestyle, hold the remote control, watching DVD. Look at this house. This new house is like concrete, very modern desk design. And this house, everything. We even have a DVD. Watch wild grassland. Nadam is a traditional Mongolian fair. It originates from the Asian ceremony to offer sacrifice to Aobao. Nadam means games in Mongolia. It is often held in July and August each year when the herds are stout and strong and last for several days. 
When a dam is held, the herdsmen wear their holiday best, and taking their own yurts come from near and far on horse or by cart to participate in the fair. The grassland serves as a natural race course for this doubtless people. Nothing better than this lovely kids. These little wrestlers. They practice wrestling school. Practice. Look at this. And this stands for each color stands for you win one time. They give you one color. This is ribbon. So these kids win a lot. Let's try. Come here, let's try with us. Yeah, let's try. This is a little spiritual for Mongolian life. When you're little kids, you start to practice wrestling. You need to be strong. History of Inner Mongolian Wrestling, or called Bok, the Mongolian word for wrestling, was born in the 11th century. The present-day form of competition is nearly 1,000 years old, and has increased in popularity since the founding of China in 1940s. It is a sport that is lovely by athletics, scholars, and statesmen. <laughs> Remember, we all are living in a dream or a dream-like life. You might not know that until suddenly you have a chance to visit another location where your normal routine is not relevant. This is Travelog, and I will see you again with a new adventure. Let's go.